In this Tuesday Photoshop tutorial, I want to take a look at how you can create a two-way editing streak between Camera Raw and Photoshop thanks to Camera Raw Smart Objects. I'm Dave Cross, and as I said in this tutorial, I want to take a look at Camera Raw Smart Objects. Now, as a bit of background, of course, Camera Raw is a great tool for editing your RAW files and then opening them in Photoshop, but by nature, by default, it's kind of like a one-way street. In other words, you apply whatever settings you want in Camera Raw and you hit Open Image. It applies those settings and then opens in Photoshop. But then if you want to make any further adjustments to those Camera Raw settings, you really can't because it's only gone from Camera Raw to Photoshop. So I want to show you how you can change that behavior with one simple checkbox that will make life a whole lot easier when you're working with Camera Raw files. So I'm here in Bridge and I want to open a RAW file, so I double click on it. It switches to Photoshop, but of course it opens first in Camera Raw. Just to show you what I was talking about, this is the first, the default behavior. So I'm going to make a bad adjustment, overdo something, and hit Open Image button and it will apply those settings and open in Photoshop. But as you can see, it's opened it as a regular background image. So now if I wanted to, to tweak those settings back in Camera Raw, I really couldn't unless I just started again. So I literally have to close this file, not save any changes, and then come back and reopen it. Now by nature, Camera Raw is also non-destructive, which of course means that even though I did that bad exposure setting, now I can change to something else and not worry about it. So now I'm going to go the other extreme just to make a point. And again, I'm overdoing it because I want to make a point here that why this is useful to have this two-way editing street. And then the good news is you only have to do this once. Once you turn on this checkbox, it'll be turned on from then on. And where you find the checkbox is down here at the bottom where it looks like just information it says Adobe RGB 1998, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I click on that. To me, this should actually be a button that makes it pretty clear that we can click on it. But anyway, we click on it and this is the workflow options dialog box that comes up, which has some really important information like do you want to resize it, uh, what color space do you want, but also down here at the bottom, you see there's this option that says open in Photoshop as smart objects. Now, this is a checkbox that really should be thought of as a preference, meaning once you turn it on, you don't have to do it again. It will stay on from then on. So this is what it looks like now. I've done these, again, a, not a very good adjustment, and I hit Open Object. It's going to apply those settings, but now the difference is it doesn't say background. There's this little symbol on the corner of my layer thumbnail, which means it's this thing called a smart object. So now I could do some Photoshop style things. I could you know, transform, adjust. I can even make a selection and add a mask, do whatever I want. But then at any time, if I want to make any further adjustments to it, I just go right to my thumbnail of the layer, double click on it, and that's going to jump me right back to Camera Raw. So this is now live editing. So I can make whatever changes I want. Let's pump up the saturation a little bit just to show you that I'm doing something dramatic. Maybe bring the highlights down, the whites down just a bit. There we go. Click OK. And now you see it's going to update but preserve whatever I've done in Photoshop. Now, just to take this one step further, because this is a smart object coming from Camera Raw, it also means that by default, my filters will now be smart. I don't have to convert it to a smart object because it's already a smart object from Camera Raw. So I could, for example, let's just do something crazy so you can see I'm doing something dramatic. We'll do a heavy duty motion blur. And then on the filter mask, take our paintbrush, 80% opacity, something like that. I just want to see my dancers a little bit more. I'm just doing this very quickly, of course, just to show you the idea. And let's say we've done that and now we've got all these effects on, but even now I want to adjust some setting in Camera Raw. Just double click on that thumbnail and I could, for example, convert it to grayscale. Click OK and then it's going to go and update. So there's lots of times where this can be very useful, especially for things like when you're trying to make a selection and it's hard to see the edge of your subject, temporarily in Camera Raw, overdo the adjustment, maybe really expose it very highly or underexpose, whatever you need to do to make it easier for you to see the edge of the person you're trying to select, then of course, whatever tool you're using, like the quick selection tool, will also work more easily. Then, once you're finished making that selection and or mask, 
just simply jump back to camera raw and change it again. So it's a really powerful way of working between camera raw and Photoshop, making that two-way editing street thanks to camera raw smart objects. Be sure to tune in every week for my quick little Photoshop Tuesday tutorial, and we'll see you next time. Please subscribe and share this video with your Photoshop using friends. Thanks very much.